<laughs> right, hello, welcome back again to another episode on uh, the Final Flight Podcast, the uh, Chelter Festival Atlantic Post Countdown Show. We are at week six. Uh, the boys are back for another episode, and we have another very, very special guest uh, live from a pub in shop. So we've got Henry Brook uh, flying at the moment. Henry, thank you for giving up a bit of your time for the to come on the show. Uh, how are you feeling tonight? Are you, are you good? Yeah, we're really good. We're good. We've had um, one ride on the way down here last uh, this today at Utah, so, uh, so it didn't do any great shakes. But um, now we're hopefully we can grab one tomorrow and start of the week. It'd be nice. Fingers crossed, but it's always good to start on a winner. Uh, but yeah, what we'll do is uh, we'll just go through a bit of the news, obviously a few bits that have uh, happened at the weekend, and we'll chat about them. And then we'll come to you, Emery, we'll talk about a few of your uh, good winners and a few horses uh, to come for the uh, the rest of the season. And, uh, and then we'll put up our anti-post picks. So what we'll do is then we'll get straight into it. Uh, no better place to, to start, I and mean, I'll come to Rich first, because he's obviously the biggest fanboy in the world, even though Joe took that over at the, uh, the weekend. But brave man's game, beaten again. So-called best chaser in the UK. I mean, what did you think of it, Rich? I thought it looked good after uh, jumping like the third. And then, uh, <laughs> I think, like you say, I think he just got out of stage. Uh, slightly concerned now going to the King George. You know, that's two defeats on the bounce. He didn't really find a lot, did he? That, that's my worry now. So, even though I am still his biggest fan, uh, I might just be uh, supporting him rather than putting any money on him going forward. Soon deserted him, mate. I mean, Joe, you went to Haydock. I mean, you obviously had a good day, uh, some good content up there on Twitter and things like that. What were your thoughts watching it live? Yeah, brilliant, mate. It was a strange race. Obviously, I think um, Daryl took it up and then Harry sort of went for it as they were coming round on the last 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 circuit and then Protector Act drop, dropped away and Correct Rambler dropped away and all of a sudden you've got a two-horse race. Protector Rats not in there, and you're thinking, well, Brave Man's game's got to come and win this. And like Rich said, Rope, a guy just seemed to stay and stay and stay. And at the end, I think he was pretty comfortable. Um, Venetia's flying. Um, I mean, she said that Royal Pagai doesn't really do much at home. I think uh, Paul Nichols said that um, Daryl thought four, four out, he was just going to go and win the race. So, like Rich said, it was a bit concerned. He didn't seem to find much. Um, it's a pretty flat track as well. So, it should have suited the horse, really, but no, like I say, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be touching him for the King George or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously Royal Pagar was impressive, and I'll come to you, Henry, if I can. I mean, you obviously had a few ride a few rides on the date here, Doc. I mean, in your sort of professional opinion, how did you feel like it was riding? What did you make of um, Royal Pagar and Brave Man's game? Yeah, it was definitely good to soft on the chase track. Mm. Um, maybe a little bit better on the hurdles track. Um, I was impressed enough with Royal Pakai. I thought Venetia Williams is a genius. They're obviously she's got them in some order. Yeah. Um, you know that she's normally a mud lover and like she's had a great weekend and we're on good ground still virtually. So uh, that kind of statistic goes out the window there. But <laughs> whatever she's doing with them is good. Um. And I think Braves Man game just looks so good. Just looks like a, lo a horse you'd love to ride. He looks so good with his jumping. He was class mm. at Haydock. Um, I think most probably just for myself watching him, can't understand why they make so much use of him. Um, it, for me, I'd ride him like he is. A, he's a very high class cruising horse. He jumps very well, so I don't know why they need to be in front with him. Um, mm. You know, you could mostly just ride him halfway, something like that, get him covered up. I think Kempton will suit him better because um, it definitely will be better ground there and it's a lot faster track. So I think that will help him um, mostly the latter end of the race where he's maybe last twice just looked like he's flaunted a little bit. But um, yeah, he most of it, he's one of them horses you must be doing quite a lot on him. Without, from a jockey's point of view, without actually realizing how quick or how much you're actually doing, he's very high cruising speed and he jumps so well. Um, he kind of just maybe it's just, he's a hard horse to ride. Yeah, I mean, Daryl, we obviously had Daryl Jacob on before, so it was good to get his insight as well. He was looking forward to it, but <laughs> I get what you're saying there. I mean, I think a few might desert him for the King George now after watching that, but. It's like you say, it's a very different style of track to Haydock. You know, it's a lot more of a speed track. So it seems to get a lot of people, a lot of the horses off it early, I think, in the King George. So we'll see how he gets on. But 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, Richard deserted him now, so that's the fan club in the bin. Uh, <laughs> you're finally going to come to my side. I've been always against him, even though I always, <laughs> even backing against him, I seem to find wrong one. But now, fair play to Venetia. She's got him, like I say, she's got him firing. It's great to see. She's got this, like I say, a bit of a muddle of a sort of uh, badge on her, but she's soon getting rid of that and uh, the horses are flying at the moment. So, yeah. I, be I believe as well she's the first female trainer to win the, win the Bet Fair Chase. Yeah, she, she is. is yeah. Wow. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. That is fantastic. Well, long may that continue, boys, eh? Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, I think that stuff, that's fantastic. So that's Brave Man's Game in the bin, finally. Get in. Um, <laughs> so we'll move on then, obviously, the race that was today. I don't know if you managed to watch it, Henry, but obviously galloping the Champ return in the John Durkin. Uh, you had the likes of Appreciate in there, Blue Lord, and the winner, Fast or Slow. I mean, what did you manage to watch the race, Henry? What did you think of it? I, I actually didn't. Um, I was running the track at the time. Um but it's just a funny race to, to kind of pull out that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we, we'll, I mean, I'll come to you then, uh, to, to go you, Joe. I mean, obviously, a lot shorter trip than the Gold Cup. I mean, a lot of people are saying that the the, uh, the Gold Cup's taken all out of the likes of Brave Man's Game galloping the shunt, but, I mean, it would have been tough to do it over that sort of distance anyway, but I thought Fast or Slow were really, really impressive, and he's definitely shown that that Punchers Town race wasn't a one-off, hasn't he? Yeah, mate, hundred percent. He seems very progressive. I mean, it was sort of a funny field in there. You've got Statler in there, who's you know one three mile plus. Blue Lord, who you know a couple of years ago, well, last year they were talking about the Arkle running over two mile one. Appreciated, who just hasn't really had a, you know, a sort of a trip or a, an obstacle that he's seen to like. And then Galloping de Champ and Faster Slow, who probably want further as well. So it's a, it's a race for me. Obviously, Gallup and Deschamps being beat, um, and he was obviously beat last year by Faster Slow as well after the uh, after the festival, and it just shows it was sort of no fluke. Um, I mean, there's probably plenty more to come from Gallup and Deschamps, you know, up in trip. He probably wasn't finally tuned up for this, but neither probably was Faster Slow, the rest of them. Um, I was pretty impressed with Appreciated. Obviously, he's got swallowed up by, you know, stairs um, compared to him, but... Yeah, I was a bit disappointed. Gallop and Deschamps made a few mistakes. You know, he said, you know, Henry Henry mentioned that you know you've got your likes of Brave Man's game. He's very classy. Gallop and Deschamps just looked a bit messy today. I thought he, he was guessing himself a few. He was turning in the air, and it just didn't seem like the Gallop and Deschamps in the John Dirk and last year who had him all hard off the bridle early on and just steamed away. So, I mean, he's he's only gone out to two to one for the Gold Cup. You know, but it might be a bit of pos a bit of a positive for the Gordon Elliott team now looking at that one. Yeah, I mean, we might, we'll obviously get onto that later on. But I mean, Rich, I, I was impressed. I mean, two, two mile three furlongs, a very sharp trip for most of them on, in there. And I thought appreciate had it so not the way it kicked off that home bend and and, and that camera angle was quite impressive. I thought uh, to show like the speed they were going and the fact that fast or slow's got up. I mean, he showed how versatile he is there, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, like you say, the trip probably didn't really suit a lot of these, but uh, I still I thought Galloping wasn't very fluent with his jumping. You know, I thought he wasn't as slick as he was last year. And I would be concerned that the Gold Cup does take it out of horses. Uh, like, not many have won it twice in a row. I know uh, we had one horse that did it, but yeah, I think Brave Man's game and Galloping Shump, I think you can see it has taken a little bit of a toll. And uh, I'd be interested to see what he's like when he does step up and trip, see if he uh, does show any scars of that Gold Cup still. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, we've had a few come out already from the Gold Cup that have kind of underperformed first time out. You know, Brave Man's Game, obviously, beaten twice, conflated, beaten a couple of times. Protector, obviously, was well beaten in the Betfair Chase. So, I know we obviously Rolper guys come out and, and won, but it's going to be very interesting to see just how much that Gold Cup form actually stands up and whether these uh, these horses can come back and... Uh, and, and getting back to the top, but we'll see. I mean, you'd be a brave, you'd be a brave man, pardon the pun, backing any of them um, <laughs> to win the Gold Cup again this time round. I'd be probably looking elsewhere, but yeah, fantastic. Well, that, that's kind of all that I was going to talk about news-wise. I thought they were the two big points. Uh, I didn't want to keep people too long. So if I can, Henry, I'll come back to you. I think there was just a little bit of uh, back chatter in there um, behind you. I don't know if you can unmute yourself or if I'm, I don't know if I've muted you by accident. Uh, no, it's grand. It's the, um, just the music they're playing in here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it sounds um, all right, does that? I thought, uh, but yeah. Uh, so what we'll do is then, if it's all right, we'll just talk about a few of your riders that we've uh, we've been lately. Obviously, we went to the Greenall and Guerrero Yard, and they, they were all fantastic. And 
and we've got that good connection there. They've had some really good horses, and um, you've obviously rode some really, really nice winners for them lately, which is fantastic. You know, congratulations on that. Uh, the first one we wanted to start with really was obviously one of the big ones, Jess Geel, you know, winning that theft. I mean, that was just a fantastic thing to see. I mean, can you just talk us through it a little bit? How did you feel during the race and, and after sort of thing? Yeah, um, it was very straightforward. Um, to be fair, we didn't, like, um, I get my instructions off of Josh and Ollie most, mostly. And mm. last year, we were, were kind of, we used to talk a lot of instructions. And now this year, they kind of, I've left it very much to me a lot with a lot of these horses, um, which is great because it's, it's mm. kind of my job. I know my form. I know the horses inside out now. So I know how, you know, the vast majority of our horses like to be ridden. Mm -hmm. So I kind of done my homework and I'd seen, I was sadly off when I broke my hand when he ran in France. So that was a shame. And they rode him a bit differently there with the blinkers on. Mm. Um, and, you know, he won. So that was nice. And, I'd kind of done my form and I was going to be riding him handy-ish somewhere like that, halfway back, dropped back in trip over two and a half. And uh, I gave Josh the saddle, um, I don't know where Ollie was, and uh, he just said that, you know, we're doing something, we're going to try something different, just, you know, you can do your own thing in front. And when they kind of say that, then that's just something that I do. Um, and yeah, he was absolutely spot on. He jumped from fence to fence. With the blinkers definitely helped him. I found that, Every time that I've normally ridden him at um, Aintree, I just found that the, the he, he, anything he has a tendency to go left a little bit, and he just lugs left a little bit. And when he's got the rail there, he's absolutely grand. And in the previous years, I've found just the um, the dog leg to get mm. out onto the hurdles track up the running has always been kind of like a hardish little point with, with him. And the blinkers was just a different horse. He was as straight as a die. Um, the loose horse come and actually gave us a lead, which was good. I was mostly getting there plenty soon enough. But, um, yeah, we were, we were absolutely delighted. It's just lovely to ride. A big winner for the lads. Um, and then we followed up then the Saturday after again. So, look, they're obviously a team that know what they're doing. And uh, I'm very lucky to be part of it. Yeah, they've been fantastic. I mean, when we went to the yard, they, they were just so down to earth and so so open to showing us the, the ins and outs. It was just brilliant to see. I mean, obviously winning on just gear. I mean, when you sort of say there, you maybe got to the front, maybe a touch. Are you sort of in that position yeah. thinking, oh, here we go, someone's just going to come swallow me up, but you just sort of yeah, drive just, in? Not as such got to the front, but I kind of when I kicked him, I was like off the bend and he kind of went up the running and I was like, ah. It's a long running to be to be in front there from the corner point to the line. Mm. And um, I was lucky that your man come and give us a lead, but he would have won either way watching it back. But, um, yeah, he's um, he's been a great horse to have in the yard. We've been all over with him and um, back and forth to France. And he seems to like to go to France. So it's like he goes on his holidays every now and again <laughs> and he gets rejuvenated from going away. I don't know. He's just, he's just a strange character, but he's a great character. No, that's fantastic. And then sort of your... Oh, go on, Joe. Just to give a mention, I, re I remember that day, I don't know if you remember, Henry, Master Chewy, the race before, he got swallowed up. He looked like the winner. And he just got swallowed up in the ground. You know, the ground was heavy. They emitted the, in that yeah. race, the hurdles. And that was one thing I was thinking, you know, is just scale, just going for it, a touch early here. Yeah, and then yeah. I thought the, the loose horse kept him up to it type of thing. And like you say, it's a long, long way to have a target on your back. And I think it was one of the only ones to be in front on the, you know, the home turn at the top and actually, you know, stay in front and keep up, keep on. Yeah, and I think I agree with you definitely, Joe. Um, it just shows you that he's just, he's a tough animal, you know, and uh, he galloped all the way through to the line. And to be fair, he pulled up and he was absolutely grand. He, uh, he's got a big engine and we'll just have to see where we go with him now. Um, I don't get involved in any race planning because they're doing a great job at present. So if I started getting involved, I'm pretty sure I could uh, put a stop to that. But um, so I leave all that to them. Um, I just go wherever I'm told. And, you know, it's a, it's a great place to be. Brilliant. Yeah, How do you think he would actually stay? Would he, would he get the uh, extreme distances? Yeah, he should do. Like, you know, he gets a beach, a trip. I don't think we'd most probably make it in a national um, 
just because the way the race works out, normally the winner sits somewhere like 20th, jumping the first um, on statistics. So I don't think we'd be in a rush to make it and we'll just kind of try and put him asleep and use his jumping then for the second half of the race if he gets in. Just have to see. Um, we needed him really to go up seven, and he went up six. I don't know. It's going to be touch and go. We'd have definitely got in now without the new rule change, but that's just going to make life a little bit harder for us. Um, and if not, then I'd say we'll definitely have a go at the um, top end or something like that with him there. Uh, I don't. They'll be somewhere in the meantime. I I don't know if the boys will go to back to France possibly, or where they'll go. Um, I don't know, the options are endless with him, but it's a nice place to be in, um, scratching your head over a decision like that. Um, you know, it's definitely a nice place to be in. Yeah, it certainly is, mate. You're not wrong there. Uh, fantastic. So that's just chill. Um, the other couple, and then I'm going to say the lads might have one or two each as well, but uh, <clears throat> we're going to mention, obviously, Humper Bleak won at Chelsea. I mean, it might have been a little bit lucky, but what did you think of that ride? I mean, when you're sort of running away and there's maybe a one getting ahead of you and they sort of tip up, what, what goes through your mind at that point? Or are you just not even looking, really? Yeah, I was thought, like, he jumped, he didn't jump as well as he did first time out. And he, if anything, he just felt like he just never really travelled through the race, where he's normally a real easy traveller. We did go a good gallop. The ground was definitely too soft for him. We knew that going there. It was kind of a race where we had to take our chance. Mm. And um, he was running a great race. He was going to be second. Unlucky for Bert that <clears throat> his horse kind of tripped over at the back of the last. Mm -hmm. And then we were just picking up the pieces then. But I thought when the JP horse got to me, cut a half got to me, he fairly put his head down and galloped up the up the running. Um, he could be anything. I'd love to have a go of him like in a big handicap, like the Red Rum or something like that at Aintree. Mm. Um, I think that's kind of his kind of race um, but again there'll be other graded races <clears throat> where we could hopefully just pop pick um, there's hopefully something for him at Doncaster or somewhere like that good ground but um, you know, with, there's all sorts over Christmas as well so <clears throat> yet again we're in another nice place with him I think it's crazy I think if you actually look at the horse's farm I think he was beat off like 118 or something He's one of the earlier horses that I started riding for the boys when um, when they come from France. And I think it's really nice to see that not only have they got better with time as trainers, they've mm. actually brought the horses and the horses are progressing with them, um, which just shows you, you know, that whatever they're doing is right and they're getting better and they're just bringing the horses with them, which is, um, you know, really nice to see. So there's... You, it's hard to say what we've got improvement why I've left in them. Um, you know, they keep pulling more and more out for them and they keep finding it. So uh, they're obviously doing a good job of training them. They're not, um, you know, emptying them out as young horses. So <clears throat> it's great. You want to drink? Yeah, they're definitely doing it the right way, I think. Just that steady progression. Like it's the improvement from them yeah. and from the, uh, from the horses. It's right. just fantastic. Well, let's hope that long continue. Um, you got somebody with you? Yeah. <laughs> She's got a chat talking to my friend. Uh, just so the... try and sit. Hold on, I'll just try and shit out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is this what this now. is what it's all about, guys. This is what this podcast's all about. Love it. We've got every 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 brook running through a pub. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit quieter down here, you grand. Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> Uh, so, <laughs> the, the other one I was going to ask you about before I let the guys maybe mention one or two, but um, obviously a really nice horse that we're all kind of really getting behind and the one that run on Saturday, and that's making headway. Obviously come second to Cam Cass Sinas. I mean, we really like this horse. We think he's got bags of talent. I mean, what, what are your thoughts and what, what do you think of the ride uh, on the day? I was, I did a um, thing for my sponsor um, on the way to the races on Saturday. Was that and I'd said that, yeah, yeah and I'd said, yeah, and I'd said that the race that he won wasn't much of a race um, and he kind of got to the front. It was a real messy race if you watch it back. There was loose horses everywhere um, and it ended up committing a little bit early, missed two out and it was just kind of a bit messy, but he won it really, really well. 
when I come back in, you know, obviously he was so happy, like they did one for them. And they were asking me what they thought of the horse. And it's quite a hard one to grasp really what we're at. And obviously his work after that run and it improved as well. So the lads decided that that's where we were going to have a go. And it was more of a finding mission. And we knew he was a real nice horse, but we wasn't quite sure if he was going to be a real nice horse for this year or possibly two and a half mile chaser. Um, and that's that runs pretty much proved that we've got a nice horse for this year. Um, I say you must probably have a go in the tall lift um, next. Um, but yeah, he's come out of his race great. I messaged Josh this morning to make sure he was all right, and he was. Um, I've never, I've always, I've ridden in some Swinton hurdles, and uh, I thought the speed we went up the straight on that two mile novice yesterday was literally Swinton hurdle pace. Like we were mm. going just a serious gallop. Um, I didn't actually plan on being as far back as I was. But I just he was that was his comfort zone where he was in and I didn't really want to knock him out of it. Um to say he's only had one run over hurdles and to be he's jumping to hold up as well as it did, um, you know, was really good and he'd definitely get two and a half miles. He'd mostly definitely want it slower than it was at, at um Haydock. Mm-hmm. All been well, you know, that's what he's done. So look, we're absolutely made up. He's a real nice horse to have on the team for this year and next year yeah look he looks a real talented horse like you say and like you know i could probably get up and tip and the ground a bit softer it'll be ideal i mean we couldn't believe the price he went off at in the end i think he went off about 16 to 1 we were just a bit like that is a, an each way a bit all day long and obviously mm. it was a strong race on paper he had some really nice types in there and the fact that he's held his own and, and performed like that i think it's just fantastic i mean you know you've had Obviously, the news of Morocco, you know, being out, but when you've got other horses coming in and coming through like that, I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I'll just let, let the jaw rich. I mean, did you, you enjoy the run on making headway? It was great, I thought. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, lads. I thought you were talking to me. Sorry. Uh, obviously, I, I was there. Um, and, you know, turn, turning for home, you, I, I remember you were far back and you sort of made a move without, <laughs> I mean, you might have given him a squeeze, but you didn't, you know, ask him to go. And he sort of mm. took off. He just ate everyone up. And, I mean, you looked, you looked at the race and it was going to be quite a hot race. But you pulled a long way from third. I mean, he was 13, Miles. 13 lengths behind. <laughs> that winner, you know, the, the winner looked like he had plenty hand. He went one furlong and headways just kept after him and after him. And in the end, I think Paddy Brennan was hard at work. Like I say, for his second run over hurdles. I mean, it's, that's unbelievable. And, you know, he's, he's, his point, the point was on heavy ground. I was there at the day when he won at Carlisle. That was a messy race with a loose horse, but that was on very soft ground as, again. I mean, looking at the race, you'd think he what he wants further. He's on. He's got better ground than he ideally wants, and to come second in a Grade Two on his race over hurdles is just unbelievable. I agree with you, Chad. That was a little bit that I liked the most <clears throat> from the back of the last to the line. Yeah. Um, you know, down to the last, Paddy looked like it was plain sailing, and then. Just for the last five or six strides, you know, he was getting out and animated and he'd got stuck into his lad a little bit. And I just thought, yeah, like two and a half miles, we might have had a bit of a different story here or a lot softer ground, you know, we might have been been those way again. But I thought, like, when we come down to three out, we jumped three out and I thought I would get Paddy into a pocket. And he just had the horse. And as soon as he felt me he come out and he just got a run then, which was... Kind of, I would have liked to have got there, but just quite didn't have the speed to get there as as well as I wanted to. But uh, no, look, we will we'll take second all day long. He was, um, you know, it was a real good run for him. Yeah, it was fantastic, and it would have been a little, little bit of race riding there if he'd have managed to block him in that little uh, a little pocket. That'd have been fantastic. But yeah, he's a great all. He's a really good horse, and we're really looking forward to him. And we, like I say, normally on the on the podcast, we're just going to follow him blind now every time because we just know how good the horses can improve. So mm. fingers I crossed. I think them. their owners do really well as well. You know, they've got mm. four horses. I think they've got in the yard, and they've all won now. So. Um, you know, they've got Rudini as well, who's a nice horse. He just needs the good ground. But, you know, there's a decent race in him as well. As for, on top of what he's won, I know he won at the Scottish National Meeting, but I do think there's more to come from that little horse as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean I'm now back to um, that horse called Famous Bridge and Rudini beat him that, that, that day before. And he, he's obviously a really talented horse as well. So, you know, they've got a lot of good horses in there that are going to win a lot of races. And 
and they're all going to get better. So fingers crossed on that. So um, I'll come to Rich and John. Have you two lads got any other horses you maybe want to ask Henry about before we ask him for a couple that he's looking forward to? Uh, I've got one. Uh, I think you, I think uh, you mentioned it on the Racing Post piece, or I think Collie mentioned that you quite like this horse. It was a uh, gamester's guy. He won the bump, was it the bumper? Are you talked to? Uh, yeah, yeah, I really, yeah. really do like him. Um, yeah. actually, rode him in a bit of work before he went um, <clears throat> to the race course. We rode him at Bangor, and we were just having the babies to follow around. And I was kind of with the babies that were just having a nice cant around. Um, and they were a nice bunch, and there was the older horses in front, and some nice, like 120 horses, they were doing their own thing. And we just followed them round, lobbed round, and I could do a, a nice gallop. Started I was just picking it up from the two mile far start, second time round at um, Bangor. And literally, I just had to go and join the older horses because he was just doing things so easy. And there's, the babies were just starting to get tired. And like, I was just in first gear and I just joined the back of the older horses and like never knocked him off the bridle. And he just cantered and he worked right through with them and um, pulled up. And I said to Josh, I was like, honestly, this is a nice horse. And uh, and then we went to Utoxia, which was just perfect. He's a black sand bell and he obviously wants a bit of soft ground. And he's just got a great attitude about him. Um, and he won't have been, <clears throat> there'll be so much improvement coming from him. <clears throat> They're not a team that just drill horses for bumpers and, um, mm -hmm. You know, they're irrelevant if they win a bumper or not, really, for them. Um, you know, they're a national hunt, yeah, and they love jumping. Um, and he can, really can jump as well. That's one thing he can do. I've scored him. He's a natural to jump. Um, yeah, he's an exciting horse. Yeah, I mean, uh, first and second pull well clear in third, so uh, it was a good race to watch, but yeah. I think so you, uh, sorry, I'll have a quick question then, Henry. Do you think um, do you think they'll, they'll go over hurdles now then, or will, they, will, we see, will it be bumpers for the rest of the season, or either way, maybe? I honestly don't know. Um, I haven't really spoke to Josh or all about that. Um, I've schooled him before he ran, <clears throat> and he's schooled brilliant. Um, yeah, like, he's really good. He's a natural jumper. And, and after we ran, we worked at you at banger um i'd said to josh um definitely run him in a bumper and he's like right oh okay you don't want to go over here so i said I'd, I'd run him in a bumper i think he's good enough to win a bumper so um i'm glad he did yeah, so yeah fantastic. That i mean like i say i mean he's still only a young horse he's only a four-year-old so like i say they've, they're a very patient yard and that's what you need to be to get the, the best out of these horses have you got one joe you'd maybe like to ask about before i ask, I ask for one more yeah, the one I was going to mention actually, you know, was at the races last time he was out after a big, big break at Sedgefield. Um, he's riding tomorrow, Clondor Pretender. Um, I, obviously, like you say, I was there that day. I think you had two rides for the yard. Um, yeah. and he seemed to travel very well. He, he seemed to be steep at a couple, but nothing major. And then he could, as he come around the bend, I just thought he looked, he looked like you know. He, he was. He looked a bit detached, and then he was. He was getting back. And as the long turn come, he just looked like you know this lad's moving really well here. He could have a chance. Mm. And then, but was it the second or third last you go down second the little? Second last. Yeah, you go down the little dip for a, a steep, yeah. dish, steeper than it looks running. And I thought he could catch these here. And then he, he just seemed to get there, you know, go for it too early and just knuckled. Yeah, I um, spoke to um, Fergus afterwards. Because he'd ridden him because it was a boys' race, and he said that he just, if anything, he's a horse that he nearly just jumps a little bit well. He just seems to get his ass a bit high, yeah. Um, when he jumps his fence about, we're not we're just sure whether it was first time out. Um, but the main thing was he come out of the race fine. He's obviously had a long layoff, and um, he's had problems. He's um the apple of Gary's eye, who um who has shares in him. Um, he'd messaged me recently, like uh, once a week. He'd mention him, so um, you know he, he's pride and joy. Um, and the main thing was that he was okay after that, and he's actually had technically a lovely race course gallop, which is most probably just put him spot on for hopefully tomorrow. Um, I do know what you mean though, Joe. Like Sedgefield now, 
it's kind of fast. There's not that fence at the top of the hill, and when you, once you get to the top, it's like a roller coaster. You roll down, and he seems to just get onto his forehand. He's winged two out, and he's literally just tripped over at the back and just slid yeah. down. Um, but I thought the same. I thought watching it, I thought, oh, he's going to go and finish fourth or fifth, and he's going to run a nice race. And then turning in, I thought, he's going to pick up and win here. Um, and look, it was just misfortune on the day. But um, he's back over hurdles tomorrow, and I think they will be just doing that for mainly the horse's confidence. And he was over a fence. He was entered over hurdles and fences tomorrow. Um, but the the hurdle race definitely looked the weaker option. So um, pretty sure that's why we're in there. Yeah, brilliant. Like I say, he, had, he did have a long layoff. And uh, for a horse that just for so long looked like he was just going to be a staying on his walk to a, you know, a, a very close, close a finisher. Yeah, we, like I say, it's a great insight to get from you as well. You know, obviously, we'd see our insights, but, you know, when you speak to jockeys and stuff, a lot of the time they stay different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Fantastic. So I've just got one more to ask you about Henry before I maybe ask you for a one or two that you may be looking forward to. But uh, I backed a horse you were on the other day called Post Chase. Uh, I'll just, very, on, Joe. Can I so there's a bit of story. So I believe Post Chase ran the same day as Condo. And he didn't seem to blow when he came back in the parade ring. Um I, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Brian Hughes who won that pool. Got off. Um, yeah, he did. Post Chase looked like coming to the last, he, he was just gonna go and power away, and then he just didn't seem to find much. And but basically, the big question we, we were sort of debating, James really liked him because he was coming down in trip. And I just said, I don't think he properly tries. He likes, I don't think he likes a battle. Yeah, well, I honestly, when I, when we were driving to Sedgefield, I thought he's like as close to a certainty as you can get. I scored him the week before. He was absolutely bouncing. He's by Scirocco. Um, and like he is sharp, and he's like he want he's a horse that mostly needs to run when he's like telling you he's absolutely bouncing. He felt great. He travelled through the race. One thing he can do now is he is electric to jump. He's honestly he's so good. Like he's just does it all himself. He's just yeah, just a passenger on him. It's he's great to ride. Um, and I got to the top of the hill. I thought happy days. And one thing that I should have done is. When Brian Hughes made his move on the outside, I should have switched to the inner and took a f and followed straight through. And I got there mostly soon enough, got into a battle and most probably didn't stay on the day of a free free. And he wants good ground, but he doesn't want it as soft as it was at Market Raisin. So I was a little bit disappointed when we got there and it was as slow as he want, was. Um, he travelled through the race, lovely, jumped class, just the bottom bend at Market Raisin was really soft. He just kind of got his legs stuck in it a little bit. Um, and then he was doing all his work, best work, up up the finish. For you lads that bet him, it's mostly disappointing for you because the young lad, um, Alex Edwards, I think it is 14 times. So most probably on Tuesday, he's going to get disqualified. So um, post chase will get the race, but... If you've bet him, you won't win nothing. <laughs> Fantastic. Because <laughs> James really liked him, and James has got a little Patreon going where, you know, just tells people that uh, sort of it in, is his own insight. And he put a couple of points on him. And, if he gets uh, I was... the race, I might, I might take that as the win, actually, if he gets the race. <laughs> right, you can. You, it's technically, it is a win, you know. Like, um, we kept to the rules, and sadly, he's broken them. Um, so if he hadn't, would we have won? Most probably, um, but that's racing, and these are the new rules we're living by. So we're <coughs> yeah. gonna, we're hopefully on for us um, going to get a winner on Thursday without leaving the yard. Tuesday <laughs> without leaving the yard. Fingers crossed, and if that comes through, then I'll be posting that all over Twitter and in my, uh, in my group. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, that's great, then, uh, uh, Henry. Thanks for all that insight, mate. I mean, I'll come to you one more time. Have you got sort of? Maybe one or two horses that you can think of that you're kind of looking forward to that are coming up in the next couple of months. You, you've met. I haven't mentioned a horse that um, I think he's. We, we definitely before all these horses ran this year. He would be one of the 
youngsters that I was really looking forward to was Lundin and Mare, he's called. He actually picked up an injury early on this season, <clears throat> which is not, I don't think it's anything drastic. Um, it's just kind of, like he's going to get the time that he needs. But um, when he won at Aintree, he felt like a serious animal. Um, he won his bumper well as well um, at Kelso. Um, and he felt like a really, really nice horse. So he was in first blow that we got for the beginning of the year, which was a bit of a shame. But um, I'm sure he'll be back next year. And most probably you'll look back at it and think it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, it's most probably done him. He's a big animal and he was most probably on the weak side last year for everything he did. So another year this year won't do him any harm. But um, I think he's a lovely horse to look forward to as well. Fantastic. Now that'll do us. Uh, right then, that's great. Cheers, uh, cheers for that, I very much appreciate it. So what we'll do now then is um, we'll go through our next um, week six picks. I would have had a graphic for the team, but I just didn't manage to do it. But uh, what we'll do is we'll go, us will go, and then I'll come back to you when we finish off. But I'll probably ask you yeah. on each of the picks anyway. Do you want to put, shall I put myself back on mute here? Well, you can, I'll, sort of, uh, I'll sort of ask you to unmute it to ask you a question. Yeah, that's you. fine. Then, Sound. We had obviously Daryl on last week and he gave a very funny opinion on every single one of our picks, basically saying they're no good. So uh, we'll see what you think of the, this week's picks. So um, okay, I'll come to you um, first then, Rich. You can go first this week. Uh, you've obviously made a move for another horse. So I'll let you uh, uh, take it away. Yeah, so obviously I went into the novices last time, but I'm going back... Uh, Back over the ones we know. Uh, so it's the Gold Cup, and I'm going for a horse that shouldn't have any scars from last year, and that's Jerry Cologne. Uh, he was very unfortunate not to win at Cheltenham last time, uh, and he's come out and uh, won last time out at Dam Royal. Uh, I thought that was quite impressive. You know, he was he was well back, and then uh, he managed to stay on and uh, beat Envoy Allen by a neck. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to take a punt on him, you know, I think when we had George on, I think he mentioned that he quite likes him for the Gold Cup. Uh, I've just kind of taken a bit of a punt after seeing Galpin and Brave Man's game kind of not fire first time out. I mean, I'll probably be made to, to look like a fool come March, but yeah, I'm just kind of uh, taking a punt on Jerry this time. I think uh, I think we'll be banging, bang there. Yeah, I mean, as much as it pains me, but it'll also be quite funny that if you've now deserted Brave Man's game and then he comes back and wins the Gold Cup and you're not <laughs> in your team, that'll be one of the best things I've ever seen in terms of Cheltenham, I think, uh, going forward. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'll just come to you, Henry. I mean, obviously, Jerry Colom, the Gold Cup, it's a little bit wide open at this moment in time. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on Jerry? Yeah, obviously, he's a horse there that's going to, you know, they're hard, these older horses... Um, and like the Gold Cup, you kind of you're looking for a young horse coming through every year, aren't you? You know, that's giving you that wow factor. Um, and them old horses, it's such a hard thing to keep coming back and doing over and over again. There's been there aren't many Porto stars, them, and um, and eventually, you know, it, it catches up with them all. Like, it's a grueling race, the speed they go, it's it's a hard thing to kind of. I'd always be opting for that younger horse coming through his first time in it, you know. Um, I You can't not be impressed with Royal Pakai if it's softish ground at Cheltenham. Um, you know, I don't think they'll overly race him now before then. Um, I wouldn't know what their plan is to go to, but, yeah, it's just... They're hard to note, these older horses, and that's, you know, that's the only kind of opinion I have on it. Is that they're just hard to go. I don't actually think Mullins has hit form yet this season. Myself, um, he's had you know a couple of winners there last week, and they're good winners. But I just don't think his horses have just bang on peak yet. Um, and I'm sure they will do over this Christmas period now. So uh, yeah, that might open the the whole agenda again. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that. I think you, you're kind of seeing a little bit more of. Maybe Gordon Elliott gets yeah. kind of firing a little bit earlier and then you're coming into Christmas and you start really seeing Willie Mullins um, fire his up. But I do agree with what you said there as well. You know, the, the the race seems to be getting a lot harder for horses to come back and keep going. Like you say, back in the day, the Denmans, Court Stars used to run all the time. And now we're seeing Gold Cup winners maybe run once or twice, you know, like the album photos and things like that. One run and then they go straight there. So maybe they'll do something similar with Rolf Guy keeping fresh, but... Uh, 
Jerry Colom, I mean, I think he's got a, a good a good chance, he's got a fighting chance, but I think Brave Man's game beats him now, Rich. <laughs> That's fair enough. I'll, I'll still be cheering him on. James, you you really do fancy Brave Man's game now for Cheltenham, don't you? I've switched now. I think I'll, I'll be back in Brave Man's game all day long for the Gold Cup now. He's, yeah, he's yeah. going to win. He's brilliant. I love him. <laughs> Imagine. I'll, I'll oh, let it down if that It'll be funny. It'll certainly be funny. Uh, right, that's another good pick then for, for Rich. So I'll come to you then, Joe. I mean, you've got another nice pick coming through. You've obviously picked um, El Fabiola for your captain the other week. Uh, yeah. Who have you got this week, mate? You're going in for another this, another mare, aren't you? This week, yeah, I've dove into the stairs hurdle. I've gone for Marie's Rock. Um, 14 to 1. Um, personally, Will Shorten this week, when she wins, um, I believe she runs on Friday. In the uh, stairs race, um, short enough now anyway. But I, the stairs is well open this year. I mean, the favourite now is the horse currently still in France. You got Tia Hoopu in there. Impere Pass won't run here. I mean, Willie. I know it's Willie Mullins bingo, but Willie Mullins, you know, had had this horse in the same conversation as State Man all along. So for me, that's not an option. Um, Irish Point. Will the connections want to run Tia Hoopu and Irish Point together? Who knows? Side of Belay, very old now. Um, and then you're looking into, I know Sir Gerhard Soler at a big price, which if he turns up, he will be a threat. But then you've got Echoes in Rain and stuff like that. For me, you can chalk a lot of them off. I mean, we've seen it over years, you know, Honeysuckle in the champion hurdle. The mayor's allowance, you know, especially in the stain race, is big. Um, and I, th- I was really impressed with the run last, the uh, last run last season at Aintree. Um, I know she, she was in the end beat by side of a lane, probably outstayed. But throughout the season, they ran her at two mile four. And Nikki said straight after that, look, when we get her next year, it will be a campaign for the steers. Not, you know, because I, I believe through Cheltenham, it was always, if it's soft, we're taking her to the mare's hurdle. And if it's better ground, we'll take her to the steers. I think this year, a bit older, you know, campaign for it more. You know, 14 to 1, I think, is a big price. If she turns up on the day with the allowance, I can't see her being that big at all. Um, and I can't wait for the reappearance tomorrow. I think, uh, I say tomorrow, sorry, Friday, I think it's going to be very telling. But yeah, like I say, I'm going to go for Mar- Marie's Rock with the stairs and keep trying to avoid them novice races. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's obviously we're trying to stay away from novices. It's not a bad look. Pick. She's probably got a good chance. I mean, Henry, in terms of the stairs heard, it does look a bit wide open again this year. It's Hoopu, a favourite in there in the Frenchie. What, what do you thought, think on those and Marie's Rock? Yeah, I, I agree, Joe. You're, uh, you're right. After Friday, you're either going to look very shrewd or a bit daft. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually so, the daft one, to if, be honest. If she stays Friday, you, you know, there's a, you have every right, haven't you? Like, like them mares allowances, she's not just a, like a little scratty little mare. She's a decent size, um, which is nice as well. You know, she's she's a lump of an animal. I've always thought she's a, a mare that's really progressed and kind of she's running good races, but she's always kind of felt I felt till last year and possibly the year before she always found something that's a bit better than her. Um, uh, but she really did, like, last year she really did. There was a few times where once she won, she pulled, like, 10 lengths clear, and I was like, all oh, right, and you only had to take notice of her then after that. Um, and like you said, she mostly did just get outstayed at entry, but um, going forward to this year, if they're going to run at Aimer for them staying as hurdles, maybe they're doing a bit of stuff differently at home, etc. I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I couldn't put you far wrong with that either. Yeah, 100%. Like I say, I, I thought exactly the same for me. It was the January at Cheltenham um, when she turned up and um, Nikki had first three. It was 7-2 and um, Rock was 11-2. She absolutely battered horses like I like to move it, Napa's Hill, brewing up a storm, first three. I mean, she beat them by six lengths. And then you say, well, yeah, she is a serious animal. Like I say, if I, I'm going to look like, a, like an idiot on Friday, she stays, Nikki comes out and says, who's never going to stay, it's always two miles for, oh, I'm going to look like a genius when she's shortened up into six to one or seven to one, like the favourites. It is what it is, but I, I do think this year she'll be a better animal. Yeah, but she gets beat by two, poo, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, yeah. Right, that's fantastic. Another nice pick there, Joe. So I'll do my pick then and then we'll, uh, we'll finish on Henry. And I've got one more question for Henry before we finish at the end as well, which I'll, uh, I've, got, I've got to get him on and see which team he's on, but 
Uh, my selection for week six is um, going to be Stay Away Fair for the Brown Advisory and Novices Chase. Uh, you can currently get about 10 to 1. Uh, so I'm going to go for him. Obviously, we had a rock coin for this race and unfortunately he's picked up that um, season-ending injury, which is such a shame because obviously we really, really were getting behind him. But um, I've decided I'm going to replace him now with Stay Away Fair. Uh, I think he's got a great chance. I think you know he's, he's a three-mile point winner. It was, uh, it was it's quite likely race to be fair. Uh, he won his maiden at Newbury. He's won on good ground. His point to point was on good ground, but I think he goes on either. Um, and his, his, his form's quite good. He obviously, he had a decent prep behind Maximilian at Doncaster, uh, which prepped him up for the Albert Bartlett. And he obviously showed some very, very good uh, stained uh, qualities there, staying on uh, really well to win that. I thought he won it quite snug in the end. Nothing was really getting anywhere near him. Had some really good horses in behind there. You know, I thought they're furious. I'm not going all them sort of sort of horse in behind. Um, he obviously won that really well. Went and, you know, <clears throat> the, the Albert Bartlett, I feel, has become a bit of a better race. You're getting a lot of good horses coming out of it nowadays. You know, the likes of Monkfish and things like that going on to hopefully be Gold Cup horses if they don't get injured. But uh, hopefully this lad will stay sound. Um, he'll be in the entry, but as we all normally say, I kind of discount any entry form. I mean, Apple of Ways come out and been absolutely battered. That one's for John, by the way. Uh, she didn't really perform, was beaten by... Uh, well beaten by Grey Dawning <clears throat> on the day. Who obviously, um, uh, Stay Away Fair actually won on his chasing debut. That was on soft ground at Exeter Three Mile. I thought he jumped well throughout and obviously stayed on really well and won that uh, going away in the end. I just think he's a, he's a chaser. He's a three-mile chaser. He's, he'll be made for the Brown Advisory. I think that's going to be the target. So without a bit of Rocco in there, I think, you know, I went. you go through the rest of the field and there's not really much in there. I know you've obviously got Gaelic Warrior in his favourite, but... Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk between him and the Turners and the Brown Advisory. Not sh not sure which way he's going to go. I think he's probably going to go Turners more towards that route. So I'd probably discount him. Uh, and of the rest, you kind of got your classical dreams. A lot of Irish horses in here. Giovinco is obviously the interesting one. The other one that won well at entry. Uh, but again, I just think Stay Away Fair's got the real um, real um, profile to win it. I think he's a real out and out stayer. He jumps really well. And I think he's obviously been on one at Cheltenham before. So I'm going to go for Stay Away Fair. Uh, what do you think of that one, Henry? Let me know. Do you think it's a good one or not? Yeah, no, I like it. Um, it's a big price as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll shorten up. He'll run before Cheltenham for sure again. Um, Harry Cobden obviously likes the horse a lot. And you can just tell when he rides him, he oozes confidence on him. You know, he never gets panicky. Um, he jumps well. Just going back to Apple Away there, though. They were over the moon with that run mm. at um, Haydock. Um, I actually followed. I actually followed it home on one of Brian Ellison's horses, um, and I don't think that you know that was the be all and end all. I think it was mainly just having a good jumping round. And when I watched it back, it was, he really did jump well. Um, I think he's going to need a step up and trip as well. Um, and I just heard when Derek got off and Lucinda was delighted, they were delighted. They were, um, you know, they were obviously very happy with the way it jumped and, and travelled through the race. I'm pretty sure it'll come on for the run as well. So, still, I do agree with you. I do think um, your lad will just have that bit more class. Yeah, 100%. No. Sorry to put in there. No. I, obviously, I was there. And I, I seen the, obviously, I was there and I had a little bet and I just couldn't believe Great Dawning was the outsider of the three. I mean, Apple away probably once for the first run of the season over fences. Mm. You've got to take them on. Gerard de Manil once a lot further. This is probably there for the Grand National mark, you know, fourth yeah. way last year. Great Dawning already had a run. Um, one, one over two mile four last year. So clearly has the speed. I thought it was always going to happen. But when you look at Apple away, it was only beaten full length by Gerard de Manil. That isn't a bad first run over fences. No, I... I liked it as well. I thought, you know, especially over too far around there, and they are decent fences at Haydock. That's one thing they are. Just love the way it jumped and got from fence to fence first time out. Like it was a big ask that for a horse first time out over fences. Um, so yeah, I was I was really happy. I was well, not happy because it didn't mean note to me whether it won or not. But um, yeah, I, I, looking at it, I thought yeah they'll be happy with that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they go with. Obviously, she's, she's a mare. I mean, they're talking maybe the mare's chase, but 
obviously that's two mile forward and she probably wants to step up in trip obviously she's gonna have to go against the boys but we'll see she's obviously gonna have she's obviously got a good engine and she will come on for the run so it will be interesting mm. uh, but i'm quite strong and stay away here. so fingers crossed uh, they can go and win so i'll come to you there henry have you managed to uh, come up with a cheltenham festival anti-post pick for us yeah it's in a simple one though the horse that harry cobden rides is the name of him's left my head um for james owen he won at Cheltenham last weekend. Um, what's he called, lads? Uh, Bernadette Road, was it that one? Yellow, color, yellow Colours. Oh, Bernadette Road. Road in the bumper. Yeah. Yeah. In the Triumph. 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 Sorry, Triumph. Juvenile, yeah. That's it. He looks an absolute machine. Like, <laughs> to come where he come from, he just looks... Oh, he just looks a certainty, doesn't he? Um, pretty sure Harry Cobden's not going to get off him for love and money. Um, unless it's going to be a big argument with him and Paul, and if uh, if they do, I'm happy to stand in for him with Paul's for sure. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, like he looks so like he's just got class and class. Um, most probably looking at him would like to see him with a hood off myself for Cheltenham. I don't like hoods much. Mm. Um, I think he'll jump better with a hood off. Um. Especially if he can ride him like that, he's gonna have loads of boot to get into the race. But I just think them hoods just kind of—they're all right first couple of times out, and then afterwards, I think he struggled to just get them to pick up. Um, and I think he's a horse that really will be able to pick up. He can if he can do that with a hood on. He's got bags more to do when it comes off, so mm. that'd be one thing that I'd be maybe altering. But he might need the red hood to be choking him because it'll be the biggest, busiest stage he's been to yet. Yeah, but. God, he was impressive. Yeah, I mean, just if you watch that race back, if you haven't already, if you're watching, I mean, it was so, I mean, from where he come from to where he ended up, just powering away up that hill was just mm. so impressive. Yeah. And he's in six to one for the triumph. It's still not a bad price, that at all. And obviously yeah. people will say, well, the Irish have got something to bring out or whatever, but he just looks so impressive. I, I would be all over him as well, to be fair. I think it's a really strong pick. What do you lads think about it, Road? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like I, said, I mean, like Henry said there, because he's come from the flat, so it was always a question. We know we knew he had the boot. But I think the thing that impresses me so much, he did take a win all that day, and he jumped better than his debut. But he still, he's still a lot of improvement left. There's, he's not the finished article at all. You know, you, you see some horses, and you know that they're sort of prepped and ready for now, and they just steadily, you know, get better, and you know they might settle a bit better. And stuff, but this horse has a lot, a lot to improve on with still being so impressive. I mean, I think him him and the second, Tom Bellamy was on the second. The jump, the last, I know they were separated. There wasn't that much difference. To power up the hill like that, so impressive. Yeah, you don't yeah, say definitely. That, right? Sorry, yeah. I thought of Huntingdon, he was raw. He was lugging left. He was all over the shop. And I think there was a massive step up from that run at Cheltenham. Like, at least he was straight. Um, yeah, and like obviously, his jumping's gonna do, he's, you know, he's the, but they'll school him plenty. Um, and whether or not it just a bit better ground might help him with his jumping a little bit at um Cheltenham. Saying that, it'll mostly pee it down all week now and be bottomless, but uh, I still <laughs> fancy it anyhow, so it doesn't matter. Or it'll be it'll be good on the Friday, they'll water it on the Saturday. Uh, Sunday, down. Monday, Tuesday, P down. <laughs> and it'll be bottomless, yeah. Yeah, that, no, that's normally what happens. But uh, no, he's yeah. definitely an exciting horse awesome. and we'll look forward to uh, watching him. Right, fantastic. Well, I've got one more question for you, Henry, before we finish up. Uh, the other question, really, that we kind of ask every single person who comes on this uh, show, which camp are you in? Are you in the Fasal Vega camp or the Marine National camp? Oh, Fasal Vega, I'd say. Come um, on, Rich. You got yeah. to go on. Yeah, yeah on, on there. Uh, yeah, it just looks unreal, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, just I don't know what it. Just, it just look like it's just you never know because it's just so easy. Like you never really have to get into him. And you know, what I mean? it's like I don't know. It just you just don't know what there's there, and um, mm. there might be nothing. Uh, when he does let him down, but everything he does, he just looks so effortless. 
Well, that's it. Yeah. it. It looks really good, and we've obviously not seen Marine, so we'll put you in the camp with me and Rich, and we'll take that all day long. Uh, I'm not going to let you speak, Joe, because we can't. You can't speak about a horse that we haven't seen. You know what I mean? You need to see him. So that's all we can do. Uh, right then. So that's it. Thank you very much, Henry, for joining no, us. We really do appreciate it. Um, it's, it's been massive. A few people coming on and giving their time. It's great. We do. We honestly really do appreciate. It. Thank you for that. Uh, if you are watching, make sure you do like and subscribe. Make sure you get your teams in the comments. We've had a few people into. Obviously, we've got the bundle uh, for prize for the for the best subscriber team. So make sure you into that. Like and subscribe. And uh, we're back again on Thursday with our uh, next live preview. And then we'll be back again next Monday uh, with another good guest on. So, fingers crossed it keeps rolling. So, yeah, thanks again, Harry, lads. Thank you very much. We'll leave it there. Cheers, lads. We'll see you, see you at the time. end soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.